so long, you and Brandon and, and Vinny and even Bo Allen's been here four or five years. How, how much of a benefit is it that this whole group has been together so long and you know each other so well? I mean, it's, I think it's great um, when you got, you know, guys like like you just mentioned, that's, that's been around for a long time. The, the chemistry that we have, I mean, the, the communication that, that we all work on. And, and I think, you know, having been here for so long that on the field, you know, it just helps us play that much faster and know where he's got to be. That's so rare these days. I mean, you feel kind of like it's a, it's a real kind of blessing that you get this unit has been able to stay together. It is, it is a blessing. Um, and, I mean, Bo do a great job when he, do, when he, when he is in the game. Um, and, you know, me being able to play beside BG for so long, man, um, that it's just come, I mean, it's just so much stuff that we do together. And so the little things that people don't see, like timing. And, you know, when we're running, you know, third and long, when, um, you know, I may be outside, he may know I'm outside, he comes inside and make the play. And I think those little things right there is what's got us where we at right now. Fletcher, to follow up to that, how has Tim Jernigan kind of fit into that group that's been here together for so long? I mean, I think he, Timmy, when he got here, he came, he fit right in. Um, I mean, it took him a little time to get up to the scheme and you know the type of way we play defense. But once once he learned it, once he figured everything out, I think he fit right in. And um, he just you know this plays better every week. I mean, he brings it every week, and it was a big compliment to have him you know beside me. And um, you know that way teams can't just scheme up on one D tackle; they got to stop two people. You've seen Brandon now all year move inside on third downs. How's he look as a defensive tackle? <laughs> I, I do help him. At first, you know, I told him, um, I said, man, um, early in the season, I was like, hey, it's, it's nothing like being in, uh, being a defensive end. Um, and he said, what do you mean? I said, everything happens quick in there. Um, I said, uh, you know, the guards are, the guys are a little bit more athletic. You know, it's not a whole lot of space. And, you know, he took advantage of it. You know, sometimes he uses speed. And, and that's the, the thing about having a defensive end playing D-tackle. Um, I think um, BG, Brandon, he just uses his speed and, and switch things up for, for offensive guards. And, you know, that's uncomfortable for, for, for guys that's, you know, to block. You know, smaller guys like Brandon. Fletcher, what do you think the advantages, the, the crowd, for the pass rushers, for the defensive line, the defense? I mean, it makes it hard for them. I mean, obviously, um, you know, they they'll be on the road, and you know, they'll be going on silent count, and uh, you know, they'll have things that they've worked on during the week. But um, you know, when when we're keyed on the ball and getting off, you know, it's hard for the quarterback to make checks. It's hard for the center to you know to point um, protection and all those type of things. So it is really an advantage for us. They have a rookie center. How's he done? Um, I think honestly, he's probably one of the best O linemen. Um, I've watched him, and he don't make a lot of mistakes. Um, you know, he's really real competitive. He got an edge about him, and uh, you know, you know, of course, y'all see me line up on the center um, a lot during the during the season, and I'm looking forward to going against him. How's Keenum in uh, the pocket in terms of running plays when he has to extend plays? Is he is he sometimes hard to to bring down? Um, terms of his movements. Yeah, he's slippery. Like I said yesterday, I think it's, it's going to take, you know, the the biggest part of this game for the defensive line, I think it's going to take the two inside guys, you know, pushing and getting his face and kind of make him uncomfortable. You know, let's, let's not make them, let, let him make those throws that he's been making all year. And I think, um, you know, that, you know, once we do get our hands on him, we need to get him on the ground and not let him, you know, slip out of there and, and make a big play down the field. It sounds like you've become one of the leaders of the defense over the last couple of years. Having a guy like Malcolm around, how much have you learned about leadership from him? I mean, sometimes, it's, you know, me and Malcolm are two different guys. Um, and, you know, Malcolm, is he's a more of a vocal guy, and, you know, he gets things done. And, you know, when he talk, I listen. And when I talk, he listen. And the thing about learning from Malcolm is, you know, being a leader is not just about, you know, just all rah-rah, you know, just not being about the oldest person on the defense. Being a leader is going out, getting your job done, and holding each other accountable. And I think, you know, we both do a great job of that. How far do you think Vinny's come as a run stopper since he's been around here? Um, I mean, Vinny, man, he's been playing great all year. I mean, he got he plays in the backfield a lot. And, you know, when you got a guy, especially a defensive end, that's sitting hard edges and playing in another on team's backfield, um, the way he has been this year, man, he's, he's becoming, too, you know, his own guy. And, you know, I'm, I'm really happy for him. <laughs> Chris, uh, man, Chris, uh, he, he's bought, you know, especially coming from New England, his attitude and the, you know, the way he approached things. Um, I mean, coming from, from New England, coming off winning the Super Bowl, I think the, the, the most, the biggest thing that Chris has brought here is, is, a, is a bunch of leadership, um, especially being an older guy and, you know, in our room and, you know, not being here, coming in the room with a, with, a, with a bunch of new guys, man, he fit, I mean, right in. And I think, you know, the thing about Chris is, you know, when he goes out on the field, he, he means a lot. Um, you know, he, he don't play a whole lot, but when he is in the game, man, he, he wrecks shop. What's it like having all those? There's a bunch of 
bunch of guys on this team now that have, have won Super Bowls. We're now having Chris and Garrett, and Danell's won one. Um, is that a valuable thing, or is that stuff kind of overrated? Or is, is, is it? Oh, it's very, it's very important because, you know, me, myself, I go and talk to those guys. You know, I say, hey, man, what got y'all there? You know, and they just tell you about, you know, just, just being yourself and, you know, and everybody during a job and, and not being yourself. Um, and I said earlier in this year um, during training camp, I said, I think this team could be great. And, you know, when I said that, I came back with um, the only people that can beat us is us. We're the only ones that can get in our way. Minnesota comes in with the top ranked defense. This they have that label. Does that do anything for you guys uh, as a defensive group when you go with, you know, obviously we're playing them, but having them on the other side and trying to prove that they're right up to that level? I mean, as a, as a defensive player, when you got the number one defense coming in, you know, statistically, um, obviously it fires us up. Um, you know, we know going into this game that whoever defense plays better is going to win the game. And, uh, you know, the way we've been preparing, you know, we won't change nothing that we do. Everybody just go out and, you know, and just beat ourselves. Good. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thanks.